It is an abomination to meet somebody and after living the person's life, the person is wrong. It's an abomination. Leadership is the act of helping people become more. Is there anybody who would like to be a leader here? Can I see your hand? Everybody wants to be a leader. Everybody wants to be somebody. But the truth of the matter is that it's not everybody who wants to be a leader that ends up becoming what? A leader. Look at your neighbor and say, do you know who I am? If you know who I am today, you're going to buy me lunch tomorrow. I'd like to simply ask a question. Is there anybody who has been thinking about leading strategically in this country? Today I'll be talking about a very important topic, a topic that is critical for the advancement of leadership capital around the world. I'll be talking about a critical topic that I've titled Functions of Strategic Leadership or you can call it seven function of strategic leadership. Functions of strategic what? Leadership. Who is a strategic leader? The term strategic is a word that came out from the word strategy, strategia. It is a Greek word that meant something like the commander in chief, right? It is a word that was taken from military escapades. Those days where you talk about the Athens and the Spartans, right? The word was so significant that anybody who is considered strategic must be somebody who has risen to a place in the army hierarchy that the individual can effectively take strategic decisions in order to achieve victory for the army. Victory for what? For the army. So anybody looking at the word strategy was coming from a perspective that you cannot be strategic if you have not been able to position yourself, first of all, to a place where you can be in charge of a group of people towards achieving a particular word. And the purpose all the time was simply to win. Was simply what? To win. And so it was a responsibility of the guy who is in charge to determine how far that they can go. So when you're talking about strategic thinking at every point in time, it takes a person who is a strategic leader to be able to make sure that the leadership process happens to be able to get the kind of results that is necessary. So leadership is the act of influencing people to execute what? Your strategic what? Thinking. So the leader makes sure that strategic thinking is in place. So out of the pool of thinking, what happens? Strategy emerges. So when you have a group of people, first of all, decide and say, where do we want to go from here? Where do we want to go in the next five years? Where do we want to go in this business in the next couple of years? The moment the leader begins to think about that, what happens first is that the process of their thinking about the how. Once people begin to think about the how, it leads to a place of thorough what? Thorough thinking. And the product of thorough thinking is called strategy. It's called what? Strategy. strategy. So it is the responsibility of the leader to influence that. 
the leader's responsibility is to create a pool of thinking around an idea that will become what? A strategy. So that is why if you have a strategy as a leader and you cannot implement the strategy, you cannot create any full impact. The impact, the results a leader gets, it's out of the execution of what? Strategy. So that is why the problem that is facing society today, our country today, is not because of the fact that we don't have great ideas already packaged. The problem is that we lack the capacity to do what? First of all, our process of strategy sometimes is usually what? Forty. We produce a document that is what? Forty. And in implementation, zero implementation. Sometimes 40% implementation. But the leader is the one that has the capacity to do what? To create a strategic framework of thinking that generates a result that at the end of the day, when they are implementing it, is what? 100% what? Implementation. And then results begins to do what? Begins to happen. Now, for you to understand where I'm coming from, you must understand that the leader has specific function. The strategic leader has specific functions that if you understand the functions of the strategic leader, then you can become influential in getting the job done. And the first function of a strategic leader is giving what? Is giving what? That is the role of the strategic leader. The strategic leader gains from a perspective and foresight that the ordinary leader cannot even understand or comprehend. It is a man that operates from foresight, insight. He has a clear-cut idea on where he or she is what? Is headed. So, once the man is clear on direction, then his capacity to provide direction is guaranteed. Does that make sense? Now, if you look at it critically, identifying the right direction is a very important aspect of what? Of leadership. It might seem simple, but it is not what? It is not easy. It is possible for an adult to wake up in the morning and you exactly don't know exactly what you want to do. True or false? As an, a full-blown adult, it is possible that a man is asked to re represent us in a particular position and the man gets into office and is confused on the day one in office. How many of you have noticed that? <laughs> so, he, for the next one week, he's asking, where am I, what, what, is, what, where am I, what, what am I to do? He's confused. He doesn't know what exactly to do. And so the moment that you are given a position of responsibility, whether it's to head a small department, whether it's to head a small team of people in your church, in your community, your, in, your, in, your, in your setup, in your constituency, whatever it is, the first responsibility of a strategic leader is to define what? The direction. Where do we go from here? Those who have been here before, where did they take us to? What have they been able to achieve in the past? Where do we go from here? You begin to write one. The objectives are clear. So you, it, it, might, it might be simple, but it's not easy. There are three sources for generating what? A sense of direction in leadership. The first is what? Purpose. Your defined purpose must have content and what? And value. It must also be able to connect with personal and moral values to enable you to assemble an energetic, energetic team that keys into your vision and will help you to do what? To achieve it. The truth of the matter is that if you cannot set a clear agenda, a clear purpose where you're getting to, you might not know the kind of people to bring in, true of us. You might not know the kind of people to bring in. If you want to be able to lead effectively, you need people who share in your what? In your vision. 
And there are people who will come to your team and they will bring strength to your team. True or false? True. And there are people that will come to your team and they will scatter your team. Quench the fire. They can do what? Quench the fire. Aha. Uh -huh. If they quench the fire, whose responsibility was it? <laughs> you blame yourself. Do you get what I mean? It's like I've given you an example the other day and I said to you that a man with a vision does not go to the streets and begin to announce Anybody who is interested, come and lead the vision. Once he shouts that in the marketplace, the mad person sitting there is also a human being. He carries his mat and comes. He might dress in suit. It's not important. But his system is not coordinated. So when you now give him responsibility in the team, you are talking A. He's talking what? B. He's, he's not even talking B. Sometimes he's Z. It's off point. Have you ever seen people like that? Have you had a conversation with someone? You're talking, hey, the person is totally out of point. The person loses. I mean, you're wondering, is this person in the same thinking frequency like you? What's going on? You look at the frequency around you, you can't find the individual. That's the point we're trying to make. So, the next thing is, values are clarified as well. Because... Until you share the same set of values with certain people, you can't function well in a team, true or false. If the person believes that for us to rise, we must keep people. Eh? Maybe it's a political team. We say, how do we win election? Now it's election time. Somebody believes that, no, I don't want to kill anybody. It's not, by, it's not a do or die okay. affair. And somebody else believes that, ah, we need three, four heads every week. It shows you clearly that you're in the wrong place. True or false? The leader picks his bag and runs because he does not connect. There will be clashes. There must be everyday fights. You must have clear cut what? Values. Values that at least a little bit closer to what? To each other. And the next thing is vision. A mental picture of how your vision to be coordinated in the future. It helps you to identify the difference between progress and what? Regression. Where there is vision, it helps to draw followers into the what? Into the right direction. So you are a great visionaire because you're a strategic leader, but the people you're also bringing to your team are people who are also what? Visionary, those who can see vision. Because if people can see your vision, how far can you go? Let's say you want to become an actor. That's your dream. The strategic leader who wants to be an actor, you know what that person does? That person begins to look at every other person around him in the context of the vision that he wants to accomplish. Is that not true? Yes, so when you meet with somebody who is a producer, what does he do to your spirit? You meet with somebody who is a director, what does he do to your spirit? You meet with another fellow actor. People who are dreaming like you are dreaming. You can connect more, isn't it? You will be pulled towards those kinds of people rather than somebody else who probably wants to become something else. You can't connect much. That is a concept that you need to understand that in strategic thinking is so important. That the second thing about strategic leader is that the strategic leader provides the strategic thinking and what? The strategic what? Planning. The man who is a strategic leader understands that great thinking precedes great actions. He knows that everything I want to accomplish, I must think through. He's a thinker. He's a man that thinks in the context of how do I get to win this war. Do you get what I mean? He doesn't go into the fight first before he starts to think. Do you know that people start fighting before they start thinking? <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Somebody provokes you. It is an error. Somebody provokes you. Say, shut up. Pop. Now, you have not thought whether this man is a giant or not a giant. Don't you understand what I mean? You were, you were allowing reflex action. That's emotion to determine your thinking. Somebody who, if you have thought thoroughly, you look at his height first. His height, the guy is so heavy. His one hand like this is as large as something else. And you know this guy even has gone. 
You understand what I mean? A strategic thinker knows that, ah, strategic thinking says, ah, you better clear now. <laughs> you don't have to stay close to this guy one more. You, if a strategic thinking says, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. It is to provide an opportunity for you to run first. Because he might change his mind any moment. He's the one that looks for your trouble, isn't he? Now look, it is possible the person who doesn't understand strategic thinking is a person who, when your enemy is criticizing you, you are worried. Your enemy is criticizing you, you are worried. Why should you be worried when your enemy is criticizing you? That is his job. <laughs> Don't you understand? You shouldn't have sleepless nights. In fact, I am, I am, when they begin to applaud, when your enemy begins to applaud you, shouldn't you, shouldn't you be, shouldn't you be, you should be, you should be scared. You should, you should, you should be on your toes. Absolutely. Your thinking cap should just open up when your enemy suddenly comes the next morning and start applauding you. You should be scared. People don't understand these things. So they waste time out of their busy time and they are pursuing enemies that have already defined themselves as enemies. You want to win them over. Instead of focusing on other things, they focus on enemies. That tells you that this guy is not a strategic thinker. A strategic thinker is busy in the office, in his company, trying to create new products and new brands. He wants to, in fact, those are the people that think into the future. They close their eyes like that and they take uh, things that are distant, you know, things that are distant. Their thinking capacity brings those things closer to them, isn't it? And they see those things as clearly as what? As possible. In the processes of thinking and looking at that thing, what happens? They bring out the unnecessary things out of that thing and only allows the necessary things to stay. And then your product can speak. That's what, that's what we're talking about. That is the responsibility of the strategic word, leader. He provides the strategic opportunity for thinking to happen. It is possible to have human beings in a system and thinking is not happening. That's tragedy. That's tragedy. How can you assemble men and women in a place, in a workplace, and thinking is not happening? So it's not that the leader does not know what to do. What he does is that he creates opportunities. He, asks his, he would ask the right questions. He would provoke thoughts for people to do what? Discuss. In the process of discussing new ideas, we see the light of the day. But if discussions do not happen, new ideas cannot emerge. So strategic thinking is a place for best, the best of ideas. Go and look at all of the great thinkers around the world, from Aristotle to Socrates, to all of those people that gathered men. Those guys in those days, you know what they used to do? Those thinkers and philosophers, you know what they used to do? Ah, the guy will be walking around the street. When, once he sees people gather, once he sees people gather, you know what he does? He comes there and he begins to provoke questions. He begins to ask questions. What if... Something drops from the sky and hits anybody's head. What will happen? It provokes a conversation. And in the process of thinking, they are brain what? Brainstorming. They are ideas. By the time what is happening, it is a full-blown... That's what they used to do those days. They just gather and they are thinking about the possibilities of what is yet to come. Ideas on how society should be governed. That was how democracy was developed. The concept of democracy was developed in those kinds of opportunities of gathering. When we gather these days, what do we discuss? We discuss human beings. <laughs> check out, check out, if you want to know how small people are, you want to know whether the company you're keeping is a company that will take you anywhere. Watch. I can tell you the symptoms. The moment two or three people gather, eh, and one person starts, he thinks he's, and he generates one gist, and the other person magnifies it. The next person, in the next one hour, 
<laughs> At the end of one hour, what have you achieved? A degradation of your mind. That's what you've achieved. Because nothing has. So, people like me, I can't stay in that environment. When I come in there into an environment and I'm not seeing anything that can provoke my thinking, what do I do? I take off. It is well with you. I run. Everybody who knows me, they know that. That's what I do. I take off. Because your presence cannot provoke me to think. If your presence cannot provoke me to think, then I don't need you around me. Because in times like this in our nation, if we want to become strategic leaders that will make progress in the next 20 years, we must be people that will open our mouth, conversations, this guy will speak, ah, you build it to another level. Eh? I remember those days on Independence Day. A guy called Feladu Toy. I don't know if you know Feladu Toy. Mm -hmm. Feladu Toy called me one Independence Day. And we began discussions of the great. Discussions of what? Great. Of the great. As we began discussions of the great, one level of conversation to another, quality thinking to another, it was two hours we were still on the phone discussing her. <laughs> eh? The next three hours, in fact, it, what I realized was three hours. I said, wow. We, did, we were just, okay, bye-bye. And that conversation, what? Start again. When you see quality minds, strategic leaders, when they think, they talk about things that can uplift the system, not things that can destroy the system. That's strategic leadership. This involves about the long term and pathways that may or may not lead to them. Straight thinking, strategic thinking leads to strategic what? planning that allows you prepare for what? For the future. If you don't prepare for the future, you are finished. I'm telling you. If you don't prepare for the future, you are what? You are finished. The way Nigeria is designed now, those who are going to become great in the future are those who prepare for the future. You prepare for the future on the basis of what your new thinking can apply to, not the old thinking. So, the importance, be able to distinguish between what? The important, the less important, and what? The unimportant. It is only through planning that you can be able to do what? Distinguish. Longer term. Thinking strategically implies a long term perspective rather than what? How many of you know what we call delay gratification? The law of delay gratification. The law of delayed gratification states that I can pay now so that I can play later. Sure. Right? It means that I can't sell myself for shorts. All right? I can go through the pain. I will go through processes and procedures in order to become. All right? Because in the becoming process, it is easy to beat the processes if you want to become. There's a hunger to succeed. There's a hunger to be the best. There's a hunger. People just want to succeed. No matter what. That's why they said the end justifies what? The means. Is that true? <laughs> That's what they think. So if we cannot beat them, we do what? Join we join them. So when you reduce your life to such, what happens is that after a while, you, want, you just join them. And once you join them, nothing significant is, is important about you anymore. All right? So when the time comes when Nigeria changes, they'll be looking for people who are prepared. And they look around. Once they can find you, you are good to go. And that's the state we're going in this country. Where if you're not prepared, nobody's going to look at you. And I can tell you, even in my little growth process, there are people that call me in the night to ask certain questions. And the Nigerian context, they consider them as great men. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And they ask questions. They ask specific questions. They want to be taught specific standards. Because they believe that we have the message. The multi-factor. All factors or elements relevant to the overall end must be what? Taken into what? Consideration. Not just one. However important that may be. Any discussion that you have already started to discuss, the truth of the matter is that there are a lot of factors that can cause somebody to misbehave through or false. In this country right now, are they singular? Is it just only one factor that can cause you to misbehave? There are multiple factors, isn't it? <laughs> Some people are born in a family where misbehavior is centered in that family. 
So, so starting from their background, they find it difficult to behave right. Isn't it? Then they leave the house. The next thing is the environment, school environment. Then the next thing is what? The work environment. The next thing is so many factors. So if you're not able to battle with systems to build your own thinking capacity in order to plan, to make sure that you dodge all of, all of those, you have to dodge them like a dodging bomb. Very, very important. Let's go. The next function of a strategic leader is the strategic leader makes things what? Happen. <laughs> Anywhere where things are happening, eh? go and research. Somebody's making it happen. Is that true or false? <laughs> if you want to doubt what I'm saying, go to the market square somewhere in town. As I am right now, I take a drum. You know a drum? A drum. And I'm doing like this in my suit. In less than 10 minutes, the place will be filled with people, two of us. If I start dancing in my suit, it will attract what? More people. That's strategy, isn't it? Maybe I just have a message to give to them. When they now gather, I now take a microphone and I start talking about leadership. Wouldn't that be innovative? <laughs> Wouldn't that be innovative? But the truth of the matter is that I have made things to what? To happen. Now, some of you last week, we invited you to make things happen this week. Is that not true? Some of you made things happen for other people. Is that not true? They are here today. So, a strategic leader defines himself. He defines the kind of brand he wants to take. Are you known in your organization as somebody who makes what? Things happen. There are people with dangerous brands in the organization. You don't know that. In a company of people, the manager, the head of the organization, they have a particular name for everybody in the organization. Two of us. Have you ever heard about executive gossip before? <laughs> have you heard about executive gossip before? Executive gossip. Have you ever heard about it before? Now, let me tell you where decisions are made. When it comes to decision making in organizations, staff of organizations, I want you to take notes. The moment you enter into an organization, I want you to know from the day one, eh, there, there are people who are defining and looking at your productivity and everything about you, two of us. <laughs> there are also people looking at your attitude. They look at the way you think, the way you behave, the way you... And there are also people who have also defined their impressions about you. So, there is time to give somebody good work to do. <laughs> Four managers are discussing. Who do we give this assignment to? Because the assignments that they give you, it leads some, to some profit, through of us. It leads to some opportunity, exposure, Let's say there's somebody we want to send to a conference in Dubai. Four managers are discussing who amongst our people can go. They mention one name. <laughs> Three managers says, <laughs> God forbid, no, that guy can't represent us there. Ah, the boy say, why? Say, ah, any job you give the person, he dodges. <laughs> that becomes a brand. So when you, the person shows up in the morning, the brand the person brings to the office is a Dutch Dutch man. So any great work, nobody looks at that way. And the person does not know why they are boycotting. Why is it that the person who has more job in his hands or her hands, that's the person that they bring more jobs to, to do? Why? Why everybody, there's a particular person who does secret, you know, secretarial work that every senior person wants to bring his work to. The secret is that in human nature, people must always yield to someone who is the best in whatever he or she does. True or false? Even in sickness, the man who is sick will yield himself to a doctor that is good. <laughs> if you say you're a doctor at that point in time, and the man is a president, he's sick. Eh? 
on a normal note, a president says, I am there, president. <laughs> but as soon as he's sick, he shakes, isn't it? He's no longer president. He becomes a patient. He becomes a patient. <laughs> he must submit himself doctor. to the doctor that will examine him at least and the nurse that would inject him. If you say, remove your trouser, he wouldn't say, I am the president. He would remove his trouser because he wants to get well. Is that not true? So, it, that's how you attract respect, by being the best. The question I want to ask in this hall today, what brand are you, huh? are you bringing out to the public domain in your company? What brand? Great brand? How many of you are great brands? Let me see your hands. You're great brands. Sincerely, you're great brands. Great brands. In your workplace, great brands. I got you quite on you. Who would they ask? <laughs> Who are we going to ask? Right? So now my challenge to you is to go back and review. Eh? Review your personality as a person. And see whether you can be better. You can redefine yourself. Because there is an opportunity for self-reinvention. Do you know that? There's an opportunity for you to reinvent yourself. You can reinvent yourself, actually. It's not too late. And build a better brand of yourself. So that if your name is mentioned, some people have great things to talk about you. That's the way to go. So you can, that will enable you to make things happen faster. Let's go. The next function of, lead, of strategic leadership is they know how to relate their parts to what? To the whole. A strategic leader must be able to bring harmony and create the right balance between what? Task, individuals, and what? Yes. And teams. There's what Professor John Adair, the owner of this concept, one of the greatest things that he talked about is the fact that in every organization, there is what we call the three circles. You know what I mean? The three circles. The three circles is what you have. One of the circles is the individual. Is what? The other circle is the team. And the other circle is the task. Now, the strategic leader is able to play a role of an helicopter. You know as helicopter? Must have an helicopter view of the three circles. So the lead strategic leader, if you're heading a department in your organization, so what you do is that you step backwards and you zoom in into the individual circle. In the individual circle, you want to find out what are the specific challenges that individuals in your team are facing at every point in time? What is it? Can they improve in training? Is there anything I can do as a leader to ensure that each of these persons can grow further in their capacities? Right? Is there anything that I can do to ensure that their welfare is strengthening as individuals now? Remember, each individual has a family. Is that not true? Sure. Each individual comes from a system. You want to make sure that because if the individual, for instance, is having a problem at home, the individual might not be able to function in the workplace. I hope you know that. If that individual just had a, a what you call like, um, his heart or her heart has been broken by a failed relationship, the person comes to work, the person will be thinking about that failed relationship all day, through of us. Now, the capacity for the leader to be able to pick that out and seek out ways of dealing for, with that individual to the point of effectiveness is important in leadership. So, the leader after entering the individual goes to the team circle. What are the factors that are helping these individuals work effectively as teams? Are they promising each other and delivering according to what they say they will deliver? What can we bring to ensure that the team can function effectively? That's a strategic leader thinking. And then he zooms off again and goes into the task model. And then he'll begin to ask, what did we say we're going to achieve this month? Are the teams achieving what they're supposed to achieve this month? Is the task. For instance, you tell yourself, this month I'm going to buy a car, right? Right? That's a goal for yourself for this month. 
and you begin to ask yourself, what are the other factors that can enable my buying my car come fast as possible? It's a task you, want, you must accomplish. Until you accomplish that task, guess what? You're not a strategic leader in that sense. A lot of people just leave it. Anytime it comes, it comes. Nothing works like that in leadership. There is nothing that works like that. You must set goals for them to effectively work. That is managing the task. So any leader who does this as a team leader, because all of you one day will become leaders in this country. I hope you know that. When you get into leadership positions, some of these concepts will help you as you begin to relate effectively with your team members. Very, very key. And the next thing is what? The strategic leader understands the true meaning of building what? Partnerships. You can't be a strategic leader and you want to achieve everything by yourself. Is there anybody an island? No man is an island. You need one another to achieve. To accomplish a task, you need one another. There is nobody that has accomplished a task by himself or herself. You need people, partnerships, collaborations. Do you get what I'm talking about? Yes, As an individual you want to achieve, your ability to mobilize a partnership stream, human beings, organizations, systems that can support you succeed is what you need. You understand? Even while you are in the company, you need the help of, to go and ask a member of staff, your colleague in the office, please, can you show me how to do this thing? It's not, it's not inferiority. You're not inferior by asking that. You are a clever person. But some people in the office, somebody walks up to you to say, how can I do this thing? You say, he's asking, he's, he, you're feeling big. Your, your shoulders are high because somebody is asking you. You say, okay, I just taught him something. You spread everywhere. That, that's so, that's so. <laughs> Haven't you seen people like that before? Yes. They are so small-minded. It is strength, it is strength to go to somebody and do what? And ask somebody for stuff is strength. Is humility. It is called intellectual humility. Yes. Eh? Intellectual humility, where you can uh, you'll be ready to share knowledge. What is happening right here is called intellectual what? Humility. You're ready to share knowledge with people who need it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are empowering people within the system. So because people actually need one another. You need to package yourself to be likable so that when you need people, they will come. You guys, you understand that. What I'm saying is that if you want to be an effective strategic leader, one of your responsibility for yourself is to package yourself in such a way that you will be likable, easy to lift, so that when you are likable, people will do what? Support you when you ask for what? Support. Maybe the reason why people don't support you is that you act like you do know. Anybody who acts like I do know, eh? people will be frustrated in trying to share knowledge with them. I do sabi. I do know. Do you get what I'm saying? We are in a world where those who know too much, what is simply there is that one day, eh, they will soon find themselves in a world that no longer exists. <laughs> That's the truth of the matter. But if you don't know and you allow somebody to share with you, people will want to share with you the more. I have grown into systems where, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've stayed with people, very powerful individuals, that they will call you and ask you about A or B. And you will answer them, this, 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 this. Wow. I'm a master in taking from many people. I'm a master. Eh? I'm a master. I engage people for results. What's your view about this? I'm adding to what I already know. Wouldn't I be better? So I'm a master of building partnerships and networks. At this point in time, whenever you go to a conference, as an individual, it is your responsibility within that visit in that conference to find enough cards as possible. What did I say? It is called <laughs> in search of cards. Complementary cards. 
Because each complimentary card that you get is a possibility for a partnership. I'm telling you, I cannot tell you what I've not done. I remember those days. <laughs> those days, I say, you call member, I hear there's a conference here. There's what? What, what I call it, leadership conference, economic summit, call it all sorts of names. Once I hear there's a conference, my research gear opens up. I start researching who is organizing it. Who's organizing it? They say they are paying no. <laughs> that one is their business. Because I will find myself in that conference. And when I go there, I don't go empty handed. I print cards. And then I go and buy one nice suit like that. Whatever I call it, investment. It's investment for advancement. <laughs> investment for advancement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. There are strategic investments for advancement. And so I go into the, you see me, I wear the thing like this, I look like them. It is important to look like those who want to attract. So I move in there and I look like them. And I'm going like this, very, very, good afternoon, sir. My name is Lionel Sokore, President, Guardians of Asia International. And I'm removing my card. This is my card. And a guy is bringing his card. He's a CEO of one bank like that. Me, I'm CEO of Gottman. We are all CEOs. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So by the time I've collected all the cards like that, that's what I do all day. I forget to eat. That's why I now have a habit that when I go for events, I hardly eat. Because as they are doing the thing, me, I'm moving, I'm roving, I'm meeting people. I told you. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. And I go back to my house that day. I celebrate cards. You know what I mean, celebrating cards? I go there, I pour them on my table. And I begin to, okay, ah, see, oh, oh yeah. I, I begin to record them. Then I send text messages, you know, those days where there was, <laughs> there was no plenty GSM. Do you get what I'm saying? You try as much as you can. You go to the public, uh, what do you call it? Right, <laughs> okay. Go to the public phone booth and you're calling. You know, after I said, I just got to say hello. It was a great time meeting with you at the conference. Um, I look forward to talking to you again. You know, he said, what's your number? I said, I'll call you back, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? So you, you, use what, you use what you have. Do you understand? And by telling you all this happening, I have built many cards. So if you go to my study, I have bags and bags of cards. There are people that I remember, I just go back to those cards, and I just call like that. Those meetings have yielded results over the years. I am telling you the truth. You can't say you want to become a strategic leader and you say you are still on my own. I'm still on my own. How can you, how can you do that? And you say, no, I'm, I'm a melancholy. <laughs> you say, I'm a melancholy. My special, I say, my, my special, the way I am designed. The way I am designed, you know, I am shy to go and say hello to somebody. What the, that's how people think. So you think, is there anybody like that shoe here? Is there anybody like that here? Yeah. Let me see your hand. Anybody like that? Wow. <laughs> of course. Are there people like that here? You say, you say, I am shy. Say, I am shy. Okay. If you're shy, now be shy. Be shy. Because as you, if you don't know, monies are just all over you in form of human beings. Yes, there are plenty all over you like this. As I, and in this hall right now, there are a lot of monies seated. They are human. In fact, some of them don't even look like it. They are seated like that. So for some of you, you'll be strategic in selecting those who you network with. If you look at his face, it doesn't look like it. You jump. <laughs> you, <laughs> you jump to the next person. Lesson has taught me. Lesson, I have learned my lessons in this life that most of the time is not even in looks. Because the person that you see his face is funny like this today. By tomorrow, you see the person says, I saw many of them those days. And you know, sometimes you quickly move. <laughs> but recently, I've seen some of those guys, big boys. So you, you don't know who is seated in this hall. That's why I normally ask you, you I, I tell your neighbor, do you know who I am? If you know who I am, you're going to buy me lunch. Because my style is that I don't look down on anybody. That's my style. So make that your principle. You'll be shocked at how many people that you can invest in. Because the truth of the matter is that we are in this class right now. Eh? Because you are seated in this class right now, you know what it is? You are costs. You know what it's called a cost? 
You know a cost, cost, costs. A lot of people will see you as costs. If it will be, you're, like, you're like cost to me right now because I'm paying too much to have you here. Is that not true? But the moment I will see it as an investment uh, is when you start applying the principles I have taught you. Is that not true? When you start applying these principles, it becomes what? Investment. But guess what? When it becomes a success is when the application of these principles that I've taught you begins to yield results. Mm. That's when it becomes a success. That's when you now know that what I'm talking about matters. So when you go for training, you look at it from, ah, this thing is costing me too much time and what? Resources. You don't view it from the success point of view that you are building yourself for the future. You don't view it like that until you begin to view it as an investment. Beyond an investment, you begin to view it as something that will, as you apply it, this, the principle is in the application. That's where success can be guaranteed. Partnerships is very key. The next thing is what? Releasing the corporate what? The corporate spirit. A feeling of devotion and pride in the group that one belongs what? To. There's a pride of place in vision process. You know what that means? So I can, I can shout now and say, wait a minute. Are there people who are in this hall now who are proud that they are members of Godney? Let me see your hand. P hold your hand very high. Very high. Good. That is the corporate. You're proud that you're, members of, you're a member of what? Of Godney. Good. Is there anybody, how many of you, in the virtue of being proud that you're a member of Godney, that you went to the market and designed a t-shirt by yourself, and the t-shirt says Godney Building Outstanding Leaders, and one Saturday, you just wear it to silver bed and move around, and say, sir, I'm a member of Godney. I want to share with you about the principles of Godney. How many of you? How many of you? Those who knew me from early days, as a, as a member of Gottney, the man who founded Gottney, everywhere I go to, you must hear Gottney. In buses. Everywhere, Gottney. Every classroom, Gottney. Huh. So you cannot release the corporate vision if you're not yet at that level. A feeling of what? What is the meaning of devotion? Devotion. There are four levels of commitment, all right? Most of those levels, intellectual commitment, emotional commitment. Eh? Sometimes you can like somebody. You know you can like somebody and you're attracted to the vision. The day you stop liking the person, you run. True of us. <laughs> I've seen several of that before. I've experienced it. The moment you stop liking somebody, what do you do? But... When you get to a level of commitment where you are committed to the cause, not even the person, the Gottney cause, the, what, what is important now is that we need to transform our country. Is that not true? We need to groom leaders that can transform our country. Is that not true? Now, so what is important before us right now is that that must be accomplished. It doesn't matter who is what. The carrier of the vision. That was why when Martin Luther King Jr. was no more, it didn't stop the idea. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, the idea lived. The strategic leader does developing today and tomorrow's what? Leaders. So what the strategic leader does is that he knows that I will soon go out of the way. Do you understand what I mean? In every organization, what a strategic leader does is that he begins to develop the people of that organization for what? For the future. Gothney, building outstanding leaders.